In developing countries, the consequences of infertility and childlessness, especially childlessness, are much more severe than in our countries. In those countries, even if you're rich, even if you're important, if you don't have a child, you're thrown out of the society. Uh, there are economical consequences. The family uh, doesn't want to see you anymore and so on. It's a very severe disease and we are talking about more than 100 million couples worldwide. This means that we have to search for a technique that makes infertility care, diagnosis and treatment much cheaper than it is nowadays. And we have developed a technique with about one-fifth of the normal price of IVF, so we can treat a lot of patients in those countries for a normal price, which is affordable for the country and for the patient itself. But in our project, is always a go-together of family planning, this anti-conception, um, uh, also going for education, less children, but also mother care. We, we take care of mother care, we take care of family planning, and at the same time, we want to have a child for those who don't have children. And uh, we have a lot of so-called enemies, of course. First of all, there is a group who always tells people that there is overpopulation, especially in developing countries, and every baby we make is one too much and one we, have, we don't have to do that. And this is a debate between people who only go for society versus those who also care for individuals. But it's a difficult uh, talk and it's a difficult debate. Another argument is there is a limited resource argument. That means that if you have one dollar and you spend it for infertility care, you can't spend it anymore for other important issues such as malaria, HIV, tuberculosis and so on. And this is also a difficult situation, of course. And then we also have to fight against the IVF lobby. There are IVF centers in developing countries, but they are so expensive that only 2% of the population can afford it. But they don't like us to come and make it easy, make it affordable for a much larger part of the population. And the fourth group is, of course, the medical and pharmaceutical industry. We can build a lab for IVF for one-fifth of the price. You can imagine that the medical industry is not our best friend anymore. And the same for the pharmaceutical industry. We can do a good job and we can do very good IVF with good results, with medication which is much cheaper and with a lower dose of medication. This means it remains a very difficult struggle for us, but uh, I'm sure because we, made, we have developed the techniques, we have a good group of uh, experts who joined us, also sociologists, epidemiologists and so on. I think we are going to succeed, but it's a difficult struggle.